Hello everyone, welcome back to another educational video. Sorry, I've been on a bit of a hiatus recently, just under investigation. But let's get it down to business. I had some guy email me, uh, asking me kind of help him get started with how to build this panel. And uh, so I thought I'd do this video real quick, kind of get him started. But uh, so Arduino, just download the Arduino IDE from the website, go to the examples folder on there. And there's two ones you want to look for, blink and button. And if you get those two working on a single Allen Bradley button, then pretty much everything else after that is pretty easy. You're just filling in the blanks. What do you want your buttons to do and stuff like that. But so every Arduino pan, uh, program has two voids, mandatory setup and loops. So that's what those two are. But above the setup void, you need to declare your pins first. And so in this example, I've got an LED wired up to pin one, and it's a constant integer because it's not changing. So you have to have it that way. And then button is wired up to number two, another constant integer. And then for debouncing purposes, I mean the Arduino is processing, the, checking these wires or whatever, these pins, however many times a second, a ton. So for debouncing purposes, it's best to do it this way. So also make a Boolean to tell if the button is pressed. And then in your setup void, what you got to do is declare your inputs. So pin mode. LED is an output because we're going to be telling the LED to turn on or off. The button pin mode is input because the button is going to be telling us whether it's on or off. And with these Allen Bradley buttons, huge tip and trick right here. You're going to face so many issues otherwise. In your setup void, each button, put digital right and then the button and high. And so then instead of reading if the button is high, you're reading if it's low. And that's much better. And when you're wiring it up, you put the the voltage in the ground wire on the the bottom two pins, not the top two. You're reading if it's if it's uh, pressed, not if it's you know unpressed. Except for uh, I like to do that on the E stop. But anyway, so then in your in your loops void, uh, this is how you read the pins: digital read button. Is it low? Is it pressed? All right, it's pressed. So button pressed, let's set that to true and then move on. Uh, if the button is high, which means it's not pressed, we're going to put button pressed as false. And so then if we go to our next if else statement, if button pressed is true, which this right here is the same as putting this. Uh, digital right, so we're writing to the pin. Digital right, the LED high. That will turn the LED on. Otherwise, digital right, LED low. And uh, the biggest tip I'll give you right now is you need to go to superbrightleds.com and buy LEDs for all the buttons that you buy. Because the incandescent bulb that comes with the button is meant to run at a high, much higher voltage. And it'll be so dim you can't even tell if it's on or off. Whereas these super bright LEDs, they work great at the 5 volts that our Arduino runs on. It's great. Uh, but I mean, if we go and check, you know, my my panel, we can kind of see the same stuffs in action. I mean, any any void you're going to have besides setup and loops, you've got to clear that. But if we come down here, you can see constant integer, and then I have all of my buttons, which pins they're on, which is the same thing as right here, and then my outputs, which what pins are my LEDs on, which is the same thing as this. And then if we go into the setup void, the inputs, change, um, setting all the pin modes for all the buttons. You don't need to do it for the, uh, for the, or no, yeah, you do do it for the LEDs, what am I saying? And then I'm digital writing to all of my buttons high, and that makes life so much easier. But yeah, pretty much if you can get this working, uh, everything else is easy. Because once you have it set where you can read if the button is pressed or not and turn on an LED or not, the rest is just filling in the blanks. I mean, when do you want the button to flash? Stuff like that. And if we go into, da, 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 not this one, not this one, but here, you can see I'm doing, put this over here. You can see I'm doing, in my void button states, I'm doing the same thing right here. 
as I'm doing right here. I'm just doing it for every single button. And this method is so much easier because, you know, then if you're somewhere in your code and you want to see if a button's pressed or not, you just, you know, check the Boolean instead of every single time you're writing digital read, blah, 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 equals high. It's just a lot of work and it, it'll make things easier in the long run. And another tip I'll give you, which I learned, is if we go into talking about these guys I don't know where I oh they're in here you if you're gonna have parts where your buttons blink so like for example on my lamp test uh, the buttons blink on or off I actually do it differently here than what I'm about to say but you know it my panel I've got the if you press a ride stop for example the ride stop and ride start will blink alternatingly and instead of you know when a, a, a a right stop is pressed, you have to write, you know, turn, blink it on and off every so often. Just do one of these. This right here. So, like, this is blink every thousand seconds. Do these, and then when you're in, you know, in the thick of it, let's look in here. Like, if you're, if you're just turning them on or off, that's fine. Oh, yeah, see right here. If the blink 1000 thing is true, turn them on, else turn them off. And that way it's consistent through all of your all of your methods, all of your if else statements. So you're not turning the light on and off from multiple different places and the buttons are blinking at different different times, stuff like that. So definitely do do that. Other other tips I have, I mean I I guess eventually I can go through how to do all all of this but I mean it's it's pretty simple stuff all I'm doing checking all right the gates locked and the restraints locked are those two booleans true yep turn on the LEDs here if dispatch is pressed bleh, turn on the LEDs and send the keyboard command to dispatch change the LCD and delay it 10 seconds and that's, that's, that's pretty much it. I mean, you're not writing algorithms or rocket science, anything like that. And if we go into any of these, error handler, which error was it? All right, print out on the LCD what, uh, which, which string I say. Because it's really all you're doing is you're just reading these button presses and writing to LEDs and sending keyboard presses. It's just, you know, I've got so much in here because I like it being specific way. Uh, my startup sequence is massive. I worked on that longer than I did uh, the actual dispatching part of the panel. But, like, here's my lamp test. Turn them all on, turn them all off. Turn them all on, turn them all off. Stop test. And to be honest, you know, some, uh, this, some of the stuff I wrote four years ago, I don't even remember what, what it does. Which is kind of every time I get in, into this thing again, I, I pretty much rewrite it because I can't remember what <laughs> what things do or how to change them. But yeah, I mean, this entire panel is just, you know, making Booleans true or false and deciding what to do with that fact. Because y you think about it, I mean, making a control panel in real life, you're controlling actual stuff out there. Here, you're just turning on and off lights and sending keyboard press. Pretty simple. Uh, I can go over at some point how to do the keyboard press. I think it's in here. Yeah. You have to use the wire library, so you can kind of read up on that. And uh, I've got the wired. It's wired between the Mega and the Duo. The Duo can send the keyboard presses, so I've got a different program on the... Uh, the duo that's pretty simple that handles the the wire messages that it receives or whatever. But just uh, connect this this right here is just straight out of the library. Do some of the examples and get that working, and then after that you can just put it in your code. But you know, ke stop, begin transmission, write. 
and transmission. And then the other the other panel gets what what that signal is that it sent it. It understands that when it's receiving a five, that's open the restraints. So send send uh, whatever button I have that hooked up to. And if you want to add an LCD and stuff on there, the best way is just read up on the documentation, do some of the examples, and after that, you can kind of figure it out. I mean, when it comes to coding, this is pretty much just C and very basic C. Uh, I started doing this when I was like six or seven years ago. An idiot. But anyway, yeah, I, I can do some future videos on this. If you guys give me some ideas on what you what you want to, what you need help with what you want me to talk about because I mean there's just so much in here I could if I went through it from start to finish it would take me hours which I mean I wouldn't be against but I'm not doing that today but anyway guy hope I helped you out a little bit feel free to email me again with any other questions maybe we'll put out another video thanks guys more uh, entertaining content coming soon